Some says it's a nuclear reactor for heat or power. We thought it was a heavy water production plant, and Tomas suggests it was to house Swiss generators. You may all remember last season when we went to the large Riese project site of Usufka, the huge cemented tunnels, and the cement slab on top above the one that will be the foundation for a factory a nuclear plant, we still don't quite know what that was. And I thought it was important to go back there and take a look at that site, follow the LIDAR, and given some information I just received over lunch with Tomas, it became much more important to go have a look at the nature and to possibly establish exactly what that foundation was for. We're looking at the possibility of an underground nuclear bomb test. This was a special, special area, the special yeah. programs. This was and that's what we're looking very at. secret area. They were not building airplanes program. in these yeah. tunnels. Mm -hmm. Right? They were build they were doing something else. Something Ale oficer jądrowy miał być wykorzystany do pocisków rakietowych i torpedowych. Mm -hmm. Tomasz told that uh, explosive nuclear explosive devices, cores, were uh, prepared to be used in rockets, probably V weapon, but uh, much more yeah. much more bigger as uh, V2. Not necessarily. And torpedoes and, uh, mini, mini okręty podwodne. Or mini mini submarine equipped in uh, nuclear explosive device tactical nuclear to send weapons it to maybe yeah. new york so and tactical nuclear weapons so we heard from the polish post war that went to look for they were looking for war crimes they was looking for the dead bodies of prisoners out uh, across the mosovka he found the underground tunnel that was radioactive this was already active. Looking at, looking at what looks like a bowl, they, like they we see in, 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 the, in the desert testing, mm -hmm. underground testing. Mm -hmm. So we have indications post war. When, when was that? Was it 50s, 60s? 50s. That on both 50s. 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 The expedition was, uh, Professor Virtual was in 50s. So they, we, they found strong uh, radioactive. Uh, in, po prostu oni nie, nie weszli do yeah. dalszej części kopalni, bo było bardzo wysokie yeah. promieniowanie. Radioactivity was so strong and they must escape. Wycofa wycofali się. As I told yeah. you, narrows in, uh, in equipment were going to go away yeah. from equipment. Yeah, yeah, of course. From the cage of uh, Arden was involved into experiments uh, with cyclotron or betatron. Here. This, yes. He, in was in, he was involved with nuclear research. He built miniature bombs according to his own testimony. This is a different way pro of production of uranium and, uh, not, um, and plutonium. Yes? You can product yeah. in a uh, reactor, yeah. but it needs a lot of time. But production uh, with using of uh, cyclotron and betatron is faster, much much faster, and but so it needs a lot of electro electrical power. And so the this is the reason that a lot of uh, power was recited here after war. Yeah. They have more as a uh, third part was necessary to maintain uh, electrical power uh, to factories in this terrain, but uh, two third parts was uh, too much. Disappeared, so t disappeared into the mountain. To sell. After the war, this yeah. was sold to... So they were using way to, to, more, to they were producing way more electricity than the people needed here by two-thirds. And A, only, and a lot of electricity is needed for cyclotron, betatron, and as well for production of heavy water. And underground power uh, underground uh, objects like factories they need as well yes. electricity Powiedz jeszcze, bo to ważne, ten kabel tam, było zaprzecieli ten tak, kabel. Ale bo, czekaj, jeszcze powiem, bo to ważne, że mm, ta bomba końcowa niemiecka to nie była, nie była wielkości Leboja czy ten, tylko to była wielkość ją nas dal pomarańczą, a gdzieś była tak piłka futbolowa. Speak about that uh, the weapon, a nuclear weapon, nuclear uh, explosive device, which was sold by Kamler to America. You know, fat boy was very big. Yeah. Little boy was uh, very heavy as well. Yes. 
this was different way of explosive devices. And they were able to produce nuclear explosive devices size of ananas for Nie, pan or uh, orange or maybe smaller. Ale była wielkości piłki futbolowej. But you know the core but uh, football yeah football that is football that's football. exactly what I didn't say uh, size football. of an ananas. Football size uh, equipment. As I'm making my way around the mountains through the forest up to the foundation slab, I wanted to take a look and follow the LiDAR, because here there are only two main tunnel entrances, but if you look at the grooves in the ground, it looks like there are three or four. So if I circle the mountain on my way up, we'll see what I find. I am back in Osufka, one of the large tunnel systems where I'm not entirely sure what's up there in the mountains, if it's a power plant or heavy water production or what it was. I wanted to have another look because things apparently happened in the nature around here during the time of the war that was well in a nuclear explosive matter. That is the thesis. A post-war crimes trial investigator uh, went to dig up what was expected to be a mass grave. What they found was a highly radioactive tunnel. So highly radioactive that they had to stop digging and seal it up. And it was leading to an indent in nature that looked and was suggested was an underground nuclear test site. You've all seen the test from Nevada, how the soil lifts up and then it settles in a little bowl. Yeah, there's a few out here. Of course it was cleaned up heavily by Polish military after the war. But something strange is going on here. What makes it even more strange is people are afraid to talk about it. You have two categories of people out here. You have those who will tell you any number of interesting stories or what they have heard, usually younger generation. And they have an older generation that grew up under German control, in a German controlled area where everything was secret and where you were very much told what would happen to you if you started talking about what you've seen and what went on during the war. Then the Cold War, where an additional lid of now communism and secret services and the Polish and Russian control, then put a lid on everything and you would literally be picked up in the middle of the night if you started digging. So for decades and decades people have been afraid to talk about this area, been afraid to talk about what they've seen, been afraid to talk about what their grandparents have seen. That does not make it any easier. But if everyone is so afraid and the authorities still insist on even finding people for digging on their own property if it doesn't suit them. We're back to why are you actively covering up something if you say there's nothing there? And there's something there. There's something out here. And what we can see is most definitely not what this was all about. Maybe it was an addition to it. Maybe it was obfuscation. But it was not the key ingredient what the Germans did here. We're standing right outside the main tunnel entrance, one of them, it heats up there, and you look at this groove, clearly seen on the LiDAR picture, of the four tunnel entrances. And of course there's construction outside. To the left down the hill was the, or one of the work camps. And on top of the hill is the thing we really don't know what is. It's always the same layout, regardless if we are at Quartz, if we are at Jonastal, if we're here at Riese, same layout. There's a mountain, there's tunnels going in. Construction site outside, work camp nearby, mini rails leading to. That's all straightforward and simple. Everybody would know that. Allied Russian Air Force would know that, know what to look for. So if you wanted to hide something, you, well, I'm not going to make it look like a construction site. 
and the theory that the Germans actually flew counter surveillance here to see how well they had camouflaged what they were doing. It's not entirely wrong. After all, counter surveillance is a big part of, well, my past job. This is one of the tunnels we went in last time. Oh, guard tower it looks like it's been repaired a bit. But all these. This is owned by the city of Sofka. Everything has been slightly changed post-war for the museum. Not necessarily because security, safety, cover-up. It's just been changed. A lot of these locations have just been set up for the museums. Consolidated. Well, I suppose that's fine. But we have to look a little deeper to find out how things actually were at the time of the war. And surveillance footage does exist. The professor looking for the war crimes was Yannick Wilchor. I'm pronouncing that wrong and I'm sorry. But it was expected post-war that prisoners had been blown up in tunnels or buried under existing graveyards, which was also one of the places that was looked. And interestingly enough, when we get all the way up to the 70s, they were destroying, the Polish were destroying old German cemeteries, digging them up, just destroying them. Just because. Um, or maybe they were looking underneath them to see if there were something there. But the Germans who had remained in the area after the war, some of them were very, well, active in trying to rescue their families, tombstones, and so on. And there were other Germans left behind here, by the Germans, deliberate. Germans with their blood group tattooed under their arms seemingly to keep an eye on things and they did and they were and they lived and died here more on that up from one of the tunnels you have two large platforms and a smaller like a water reservoir Looks like mountings for generators. Yes, these are platforms for generators. Compressors. The rail would run down below here. It's another platform for compressors. And in this mountain of the tunnels. I clearly see. If you look at the map here, these two big square blocks are pretty much flat on top and don't really stand out. They don't really get picked up by LiDAR wizards. But I'm right around the corner from a tunnel entrance, which would make sense while you put construction, all this machinery right there. I'm a little surprised that there's an underground to this platform. Thought this was pretty much just be a firm platform. So when we walk through the woods away from these sites, what is interesting is when you see remains or remnants, buildings, foundations, small structures, 
because they could be remains and structures that have been destroyed to cover cover up they were there to cover up that something was built and you have to remember this entire region is full of old mining tunnels to begin with literally every mountain have tunnels or could have tunnels there's also a lot of miners I was hired to work here and I went to uh, the Valbosch Histori Histori <laughs> I went to the Valbosch Historical uh, Research Center the Document Center which was very interesting because they're nice, well-meaning people, but couldn't give me any numbers. Prisoners, prisoners working here, prisoners have come through here, prisoners who died here, prisoners went missing. They didn't have any clear numbers of any of them. Even numbers I found confirmed in other archives and other folders here, they had no specific numbers of anything or even stories of outright atrocities, or not. Most of the prisoners, a lot of the prisoners, when the Russians came close, were shipped off from here, uh, from Großhausen, up to Linz, up to Austria, Bergkristall, Gusen, where a lot of them died. And where, in the Bergkristall tunnels, they were supposed to have been rounded up, thrown in, or herded in, then the tunnels were supposed to have been destroyed and blown up with some 20,000 prisoners inside. So it wasn't inconceivable that this was a plan by some in order to cover up what was done here. Like I said, right around the corner from another tunnel entrance. And you can see that because the rail boards are still here. Now, if memory serves, this had been demolished and was rebuilt post-war, partially by what was and partially by new materials. And we were in this tunnel. So now I am leaving. There are two more tunnel entrances. That I have not seen. One of them was supposed to have a dam for water and equipment. Of course, we can ask ourselves, why was Russian nuclear scientist Flerov intelligence gathering officer and Manfred von Aden both here after the war. Both of them became prominent members in the Russian post-war nuclear weapons projects. They were here. If there was nothing nuclear going on here during the time of the war, what were they doing here? And then there's the eyewitnesses accounts of stones that are radioactive and groups of blind people emerging from tunnels post-war. We'll talk about that too. And one of the things Alex and I have been looking for are small streams and brooks emerging from mountains. Of course, we all know that water runs down mountains at least after rainfalls. However, it's a lot of water that is specifically assembling and running down these hills and little brooks that has been there for a while. And one of the ways, reasons, is that all the old mine tunnels, or mine tunnels, <clears throat> they need to direct water out of them, for one, so they don't flood. They also, when abandoned, fill up with water that will eventually find a way down a hill. So a lot of these streams could emanate 
at flooded mine tunnels shafts and if you put that picture together of all the wartime redirection of waterways tunnels built all over this area 80% of my time I spend walk through nature's surrounding objects sort of like in a spiral search starting in the center and working my way around and out just to see what is here what remains and unless I find something I'm not actually going to film it for you because it is literally me climbing up and down stuff walking through nature looking at maps compasses trying to figure out where I am and where I'm going like now and that is what most of this is all about luckily I'm actually on a road right now so we'll see it's where I am on the lidar map this is where one tunnel is this up here up there is the complex I'm headed for I'm gonna go down this way which will get me into a valley and take me over another valley well up and down we go so there is whatever it is I never noticed before right here it's a little mound it's almost square do you know what I'm saying it does look a little out of place almost at the same elevation as the top up here it just looks like it's a cover-up bunker if it was a dirt mound with time rain it would have sort of splattered it, it is almost a perfect uh, square oh well, long but no readings or anything from it I I would be very surprised if there's not something in there I don't see the need of covering it up when the big object isn't <laughs> could just be reinforced I mean, it's got a flat top and four corners. Let's see what the metal detector says. Well, it doesn't give us a signal. There's rebar in it. That'll be some signal. The very large foundation is over 40 meters long. It goes down at least 7 meters that we know of. However, it is also placed right above one of the tunnels below. Whether there's a connection or not has not yet been established because that section is flooded. It sits not far from the site that was suggested to be Hitler's bunker, but I see more as a utilitarian work site. It has a lot of interesting features that I have not seen in any other factories or plants anywhere. It has been suggested uh, by myself and Drakinefeld, we speculated if it was for heavy water production. Tomas suggested this was a site for Swiss made generators to be placed. It's also been suggested it was for a nuclear reactor to run heat through the underground site. There's a possibility of tunnels running away from this there's so many rumors or speculations as to what this was and it is rather strange that such a large foundation have not been backed up by any production plans or documentation as to what it was. Of course the Germans at the time, the Russians showed up, all evacuated or fled or were gone. So if this was the state it was handed over in, even the Russians might not have known. But somewhere there must be plans or even contemporary or modern plans 
of what this foundation could be used for. So I'm going to spend a little time and put my camera in every groove and photograph everything I can so together perhaps we can establish what this might have been used for. Right, let's have a little more of a look at this thing. I'm standing on what looks to be a platform. And there's parts of a very large cement pipe that is larger than the ones here on the wall. I have the ones here on the wall. And then here down there on the other side, there's holes as well, similar. So I'm standing on the platform with a little walkway between it. was a room that was broken, a staircase up to something that probably was constructed. So whatever I'm standing on, you can walk around it. Like what I'd be standing on, like if there's a giant motor here, or engine, I would say it could have been to there as well, except if it wasn't for that hole and the rebar sticking out of it. Cement hallway in there, and this one there, and there, and that one continues as well into what looks like a tunnel or a pipe. I'll get over there in a minute. And then there's this ladder system. I think there's a pipe underneath there as well in that room. What I'm standing on was this platform which you could put something on, but you couldn't walk all the way around it because the ends are capped by this wall. And here, down here, would be another tunnel that you could access. So I guess I need to get in there. We have this foundation with a floor section around and another here which leads to what I would imagine is a staircase going down. Yeah, it is a staircase going down. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And here next to it is a hole of stuff. So, this would have been, I think this was covered. There's even rebar sticking out of the side of this building. And this would have been deeper for the staircase than this. It's filled up. The rebar sticking out of the side all the way down. <clears throat> and then there's nothing. There's a groove for a pipe. Not on the other side. If this is deeper, maybe there's a basement. I'm thinking there's a basement. One of the big pipes here. Groove in the cement here. That stops there. I would have thought that would just be for a door. Hmm. That was down there. I think this would have been the level of this basement leading down there. And in that room I was in last time. And I just want to point out that the rebar sticking out of the ground here is not that finicky little rebar from the bunkers. This is twice the thickness. <clears throat> pipes look like they run in 
under the building. The more we get to the edges, the more rebar is sticking up. Which would be an indication, just like from the Weingut bunkers, that there would be another structure going on top of here, on top of that, on top of that. And here are the holes without pipes. They're not leading straight into a hole, they're leading into a room. All these holes which makes me wonder if those pipes over there leads into a room like this. Down there. See, this is leading into a room. Coming up on something there. Same on the other side. Okay. Why would you need to? have a room running in to pipes. If it would exhaust, there would be dedicated pipes to that, I would think. More ceramic pipes. And I will say, no matter where I go here in the mountains, there are bits and pieces of ceramic pipe everywhere. Pipes, pipes. Pipes, pipes. Heavy rebar. And a hole, and that probably leads into a tunnel under there. A lot of this dirt have been filled in after. To, and it has elevated the walkway so it looks like it's not as shallow, but it is. So you have all these holes here. That are one long walkway. Let's try that again. And oh, that's a little strange. Of course, the big basins. <clears throat> okay, it's not much, but the background radiation have crawled up to 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is completely and utterly insignificant in the bigger picture of things. However, it is the first time in Lower Silesia that I actually had any kind of reading. To the point where I was uh, wondering if it was still working. Now, Another thing is, this square hole, see that orange ire on the walls? Don't read anything into it, but that's exactly the same coloration I saw on the walls of Deepness nuclear reactor in Goto. This hole, a little smaller. It is probably a third smaller than the Goto reactor. Just wanted to point that out. Because that orange is rather distinct in nature and I haven't seen it literally anywhere else. Things I just noticed, the water level, there's a little platform on that side of this square basin. It's about the same height as Deep Nuss Reactor. Again, don't read anything into it. I'm just telling for comparison. And then there's 
the water and there's the pipe sitting down the side coming out of the wall and here's another hole that ends tunnel 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 pipe This is where I was in last time. And again, here's that orange coloration, which could be absolutely natural. Um, could be from rust in the, in the structure leaking out. It could be a lot of different things that, or as I said, don't read anything into it. I'm just pointing out that that is what I found there. And here we have a pipe leading down to just another hallway. So a lot of access technical tunnels around this complex. And it's built right next to the rock wall with actually it looks like a tunnel in there. It's just a lot of us who can't really make out what this resembles because it doesn't really resemble anything we're used to. The big hole, small hole, the underground logistical room, pipes from there comes through to here and this hallway broken up by a wall leading into this where I said there was a platform that something could sit on and you can walk around it on two sides. If you imagine these walls being built all the way up, something will sit there and then there'll be a structure above this. And there's a tunnel running in under where I am, which I wonder if runs out here on the side. I guess we're gonna have to go in there and see if it comes out, and I will. But I am curious now about these because, you know what, I think there's actually a room. I need to stick some light on this access panel. I actually think, yeah, you know what, these leads down to a room, just like on the other side. There's a tunnel running through these and the little panel with rebar sticking out of it so it's not a hole and a note these are not all round these are on no they're got a couple of sides and then a round side which and then there's this which is metal in the middle of well really nowhere and you have another looks like a little access hatch was missing here like there are on the other two there and I don't see over there yes they go all the way down and there's a room on the side except when they're filled up. This is the last we see of the camera. <laughs> I hope, well, no, well, forget it. It will not be the last we see of the camera. I can guarantee you that. At least now we know how tall this is. And there. Oh, thank God it came back. <laughs>
But since we're here and we're already doing this, let's take a look at the one that is under here. So here are two grooves that has an underground and under here is where I was last time in that little room with the technical pedestal. Okay, this is different. This is uh, some technical room. Yeah. This is definitely nothing to do with fighting. Oh, look at the pipes on the floor. Holy shit. This is very, very, very heavy rebar. This is far thicker. This is an inch easy, several centimeters. Rebar, and then these, which is crooked, which I don't understand why, but these are pipes, water pipes, ceramic water pipes leading somewhere. And this rebar goes all the way through, and I'm guessing there's if there's a deeper underground or at least in some sort of a access tunnel, perhaps. It's hard to tell, but this would have been the storage machine, something. This would not have been a place for daily work. This would have been a place where pipes and wires and things would go through, in and out of. But still, with two double access above. Yes. Uh, some proof. Some proof. These holes lead into the tunnel next to us. These. Yeah. This is not outside. This is the tunnel next to us. Which is why electrical and so on would go to the yeah. tunnel next yeah. to us. Yeah. This pipe would have been... This would have held some pressure, otherwise it, there's no reason to kind of further the connection. And that would go straight into that one. Right? Yes. Those two connect. Yeah. They line up. Maybe half a meter of dirt and stuff on here is what I'm guessing. But of course, if you take all this dirt away, the rebar would be exposed. And here's a platform, what clearly looks like a platform or something, or sit. That's been all. You gotta see past the dirt. So that room is underneath. Let's see, is underneath. These two, I guess we can call them basins, because that's essentially what they look like they are. Of course, yeah. These are basins. No, they're not, because they're open to that side. All right. So why would you be able to walk up here above that little room below? That makes no sense. Why is there a walkway above it? Oh, welcome to uh, Project Lisa, the world where nothing makes sense. <clears throat> That's full of water, and here's another one that is full of water.
end of this basin, you can see a slope. You see, maybe you can see here. You see that is sloping. Even the cement, it was cast sloping. And there's a slope all the way down to the basement floor down there. Same thing as the one over there. Those are deliberately made to slope down. This is not tall enough to stand up in unless there was something above or would be. This is where the platform is in the room below where I was. There's a great deal of interest in this place. And here is another metal pipe that is cast into the cement. And I'm guessing this was cut off by scrappers or what have you. And here, okay, this is weird too. Geez, surprise, I haven't brought anything weird lately. Um, the ends of these, these are rebar sticking out, it has a cone shape to it, which may just be a construction, um, construction element or attachment element. But this rebar is slightly thinner than what I see coming out of the floor. But there's so much rebar everywhere. And this is a canal that was deliberately grooved out of the mountain. Let's jump in that and see what that does. One could almost be led to think that this is a platform. We have these weird attachments. Or they were supposed to have been a platform. Although I couldn't possibly imagine why. But imagining why seems to be a very large part of this puzzle. Alright. Oh, the bridge. It helped my fat ass six months ago, so it'll probably do it again today. As I slide off the damn thing. So that's the corner some idea how deep it is but there's deliberately made space in between the structure and the rock right here I will say the groove next to the bunker pretty much stops here or it comes out at least to this little plateau that I'm standing on and so it kind of slopes down here so it doesn't go anywhere it's not like there would be a runoff or, or anything in that sense. It practically just stops here. Maybe it is a construction element. There would have been a rail too. Possible. Anything is possible, obviously. All right, I'm just gonna reset and get through all that branch stuff. Ah, glad you didn't have to witness that. All right. Good place. Oh, this is deeper. Put the bag there. Yeah, there's more of these things. All right, better walk here. Okay. So, part of the wooden foundation or the framework here's the side of it just from where I'm standing probably 10 feet tall and the ground is soft so there's more underneath space A lot of wood lying down here. And it's wet. And the protrusions are two small pipes. 
which are sloping downwards. And you can see the wooden framework from when they poured the cement is still there. But ceramic tile had a good maybe 30 degree angle to the right and down. I'm sure people have also been digging here. And that's it. Nothing coming out through this wall except those two little pipes and then this groove. And these are not, they don't strike me as construction pipes. Looks like sewerage. Oh. And here's yeah, stone. So it's poured in different sections. That's one of them. And the other side, there's just the raw rock face. Well. Strangest thing. I heard theories of gas turbines, engines, pump station, heavy water. I have no idea. Alright, I'm gonna crawl myself out of this and get back to you. Stand by. As the eternal construction remains, find everywhere. But a lot of red brick was used by the Germans during the war for various construction projects. Of course not the structure or shell of actual bunkers, but sometimes the inner walls, the linings, the doorways. And here, red brick is used for a construction pit gravel, water, and then lined since you have a generator platform and what appears to have been a very large tank holder which would probably be fuel for the generator hard to see without any attachments, a little bit more of a brick up there Here's more metal brackets held something in place here. Oh, and here, and here, and here, and here, and ooh, okay. So there's a lot more of these things than I had to originally seen. There are the two heavy cement pillars for the conveyor belt in the woods we saw last time. Tadeusz Moderski, his name is, he told that he was in an underground system. System was ready. Inside were machines which were fully operational during production process. And his job was to install heaters, wall heaters. Grzejniki to był Faviera. Favier, Favier heaters, you know? Yeah. Uh, like uh, snails. So these, yeah. The, spiral, we, spiral yeah, You heaters. see the machine line, you see the metal. So when, the, but that's the last thing you install is the heaters. So you had, up in Osówka, you had a functioning factory research center. You had something that was already working. About Osówka, information as are that this was research center that was pulling three times as much electricity as anywhere around. 
I hope you enjoy history and military history as much as I love bringing it to you. And if you want to see more of the photos and documents I've used for these episodes, documentation and so on, you can go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out traveling around the world to some of these far-flung locations like Van Allen Brown's first test stand behind me or Deepness nuclear reactor down there or the Magital Line over there, you can donate on PayPal, uh, protection at serviceint.com. It'll be right here, and it is also on lostbattlefields.com. You absolutely don't have to, but I appreciate any help, and I love all you guys for all the support you've shown me, because history is important. We all know that, and I'm going to bring it to you.